Hola, hola. This is Tico Trent, and I'm going to talk about um, something I touched on in my last video about uh, treaties, because I already know what people are going to say. Well, well, Tico, treaties are different than marriage. Well, technically, all marriages started off as treaties between families and countries. So there goes your argument, for the most part. And it's just facts. All treaties basically, marriage basically started off as treaties between countries and families and, you know, whole entire realms, if you want to refer to them as them. And it was basically a, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch your back, or we could bring these two families together to make a bigger family or make a super family for the most part. That's typically what a marriage basically is based on. It's not this whole entire thing that everybody makes it out to be today. All it was was basically two families forming together or two, two countries were forming an alliance based on, I'll give you my daughter. If your daughter marries my son, we can have an alliance for the most part. And that's typically how marriages pretty much work from then till now for the most part. Now it's a bit convoluted, especially in the Western world. Hell, there's marriages in third world countries. Hell, there's dowries that go with women. So it's literally still the old world tradition for the most part. Nowadays, there's no dowries that go with women, especially in the Western world, really. Like, there's no dowries that go with women. So you're basically taking on a burden in the Western world, hoping that it may, it may pan out for the most part. And the thing about the, the, thing about the whole entire contract, I noticed, because, like, I've noticed, well, you know, if if you if you do this, you, you know, they'll try to shame you with religion. They'll try to shame you with all this stuff. But there's no woman alive that's going to get married. Religiously married to a man for the most part. Because that wouldn't benefit them if they got religiously married to a man. It would only benefit them if they got, you know, socially a, a court, court, court appointed marriage or, you know, uh, Government mandated marriage to men it only benefits them. No woman's going to go get married to a man religiously. Not going to go get a religious marriage. And I'm not talking about, you know, you go down the aisle and you stand in front of a pastor type shit. I'm talking actually literal religiously married. There's no license that goes with that. <laughs> and it's just facts. So before everybody start coming out with all this stuff, y'all can miss me with that nonsense. But, um, yeah, and the funny thing about that is people always try to say, well, marriage is a, a, is two people who love each other. Yeah, until somebody, until one person in that marriage is upset and they take your shit and leave because they feel entitled to that shit. But the sad part about it is, back in the day, the Brad's family literally put up stuff, put up stuff or had a dowries that they gave to the the husband of the family, the the new man of the, the new man who will be the head of their fam, the new family going on, and for that generation, they literally gave stuff to the man, like you know, actual valuable stuff that they can actually use. Unlike today, where like you know, the bride's family may pay a portion of the wedding or may pay for the wedding. Keyword may, and nowadays that very rarely ever happens. They very rarely pick up the tab. Usually, the bride and the groom. Most times the groom picks up the tab of the whole entire wedding for the most part. And even when even when he's divorced, he's still paying off that damn wedding. Because wed let's just face it, weddings, marriages don't last long enough to, for you to pay off the damn payments for the wedding for the most part anymore these days. And it's sad, but it's so true. But yeah, and, and it's just stuff like that that just makes me think about stuff and like people try to use like religion to shame you into marriage and stuff like that. I go, okay, fine. You want to get married? Let's, let's get a, let's do a religious marriage. Well, no. Um, uh, I was thinking maybe like, you know, invite like a thousand. No, we're doing a religious marriage. You want to get married so badly. We're going to do a religious marriage. See how fast her, see how fast her attitude changes towards marriage. When you actually offer up a religious marriage, she's not going to want to, she's not going to want to be in a hurry to rush down an aisle or she's not going to be too happy about rushing down an aisle anymore. If you offer up a religious marriage or a spiritual marriage and it's just facts, women just want to be over to show off what they got or what they're doing or what they're wearing or how they're 
how they're set up and decorations and, you know, how all the planning and all the stuff that they got at their wedding and the rings and, you know, they basically want to show off. Because at the end of the day, if you look at the men in the, in the photos, they really don't look that happy until they have to, have to smile with the bride, basically. And that's the only time they, they can basically look like they're happy because they're faking like they're happy. But at the end of the day, the brats, the bride, and the, I mean, the uh, groom and the groomsmen and all the men are basically sitting there. Just shooting the breeze for the most part. They, they're not as happy as the brat side is. Like, you know, the women up there celebrating and taking pictures of her ring and taking pictures of their dresses and stuff like that. And the sad part about it is if you ever actually pay attention to wedding photos, the women take more pictures than the men. Like, you literally got to sneak up on the men while they're actually literally talking to take pictures of the men because the men really don't take too many pictures. The women, on the other hand, they take a shit ton of pictures. The bride's groom, some family members, the niece, the nephew, the mom, the grandma, the, mother, the mother-in-law, the mother, that, that, that. You basically, all them motherfuckers basically got to be in a picture because they're just taking pictures. But the men, they very rarely take pictures at weddings. Like, it's not as many, it's not as numerous and it's not as many as the women do. So at the end of the day, Marriage in the Western world is mainly for women to basically show off their lives. It's basically like reality TV via videography and photos. It, that's what all it literally is. Because you want to be able to show off what you had, what you did, what you got, what you, you know. You basically want to be able to peacock about what you got for the most part or what you did or what was at your wedding. That's all it really is for women. It's just a bunch, it's a big ass, you know, my dick's better than your, my dick's bigger than your dick. Or a pissing contest with women for the most part. Because men don't really benefit from it. Because men really don't care what's going on. They don't care what the fuck you're wearing. They don't care. I mean, they do care about the cost. And they complain about it a lot. But, you know, well, if you love me. And that's the shit that you'll hear at weddings. If you love me, you'll buy this. Or, especially with the rings. Well, I don't want that. I want this one. If you love me, you'll buy me this ring. That's all shaming language. That's all shaming language. That's all it really is. Because at the end of the day... That's the shit that women do to get you to capitulate to what they want you to do. And it's just facts. And and the funny thing about that is if you don't believe me, let let her if you're gonna get married to a woman, or if you're gonna get if you're getting engaged or married to a woman, I mean if you're gonna get married to a woman, go 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 get the ring. Go I mean go let go let her decide on what ring that she wants. Then show up at that show up at that wedding. With not that ring. And see how fast her attitude changes towards you. Bet any money. Her attitude changes very quickly. When she sees the ring that you didn't buy her. That she wanted. It's just facts. Especially gazer rings. I know women to say no. Because the ring wasn't big enough. The rock on the ring wasn't big enough. Hell. There's women. On social media. That will clown somebody else's ring. Because it wasn't big enough. Well, he's going to have to do better than that. You know, this, that, and the other, this, that, and the other. That's just women's, that's just women's logic, and that's how women think. It's just facts. It's sad, but it's so true. This is how women think. Like I said, bet you any money, if you show up down the aisle, and it's not the ring that she picked out at the store, that wedding's not going off without a hitch. That wedding's going to turn in, she's going to turn into Brazilla and she's going to start crying and she's going to complain. And she's going to try to shame you and do everything under the sun for the most part. I bet you any money. I dare a man to do that and, and watch how fast her, 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 her attitude and her emotions and all that shit changes when you do it and you break out that ring to, to actually basically give it to her. It's just facts. It's just facts. Cause ain't no woman finna get married to a man who didn't buy her the ring that she really wanted, or she, or let me let me rephrase that, who ain't no woman finna get married to a man who didn't buy her the ring that she thinks she deserves. It's just facts. But I digress. <laughs>